Listen, you gotta, <clears throat> you gotta get this on film, Dad. I, if I don't, if I don't embarrass Eric a little bit, a little, you know, some tonight, you know, or you do it, and I, I won't, I won't sleep good. So why don't you go ahead and tell that story about Eric and the deer stand? Oh, Darren's gonna love this. Yes, he is. Yeah. Jerry Lang doesn't hunt. near my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Well, he always goes with me to deer camp way down in Ozark Mountains down there. He always goes with me. We go two or three days ahead of time. Well, Eric Wood out of Rogers, Shane's friend, and a young kid that, that I've been tutoring for three or four or five, six years now, I guess. He comes down to hunt, but he shows up the, you know, the day before, you know, the season open. After I've done all the scouting and everything. So anyway, Jerry and I was hanging around in camp that morning before, before Eric got there, and I said, Jerry, I want to fix so Eric. And he said, well, how's that? And I said, come with me. We went right down this old logger road below camp just a little way. And there, right off the road, there was a nice little bench going out, you know what I mean, kind of a little knoll. Right. I went down that knoll, I stomped out the leaves real good coming off the road, and made a good trail down that knoll. Made three or four scrapes down there with a sharp rock, rubbed about five or six bushes. I guarantee it would embarrass a nice buck. It was so good. I mean, it was really good. On the other side of the road, we both got in. We trumped the trail out real good out there for about 25, 30 yards, you know. So here comes old Eric. Well, I drive him around on the four-wheeler, you know, and I show him every place that I'd found. And some of them were pretty good ones, too, you know, with scrapes and rub lines and stuff like that. So we <laughs> sat down by the campfire that evening after dinner, and I said, Well, Eric, you know what? I said, as usual, I've showed you everything I've found, and you can have your pick. And he said, well, I've thought about it a lot, Glenn, but he said, if you don't mind, he said, I'd like to have this one right here below camp. Oh. Old Jerry Lang was standing about three steps in back of him, and he just started swelling up. I mean, just, I thought he was going to blow. <laughs> he was laughing. And pretty soon, he just started coughing and hiking so he wouldn't laugh. You know what I mean? Well, I, next day, you know, at noon, Eric wasn't real friendly, you know, after he found out what happened to him. <laughs> but then I put him on another good place, and he killed a nice seven-point buck, so he kind of got over it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you know, Eric is not a very good shot. I mean, in fact, is, Darren, I guarantee you, if you stood out there 40 yards and let him shoot at you three times, as long as you didn't move, you'd be safe. <laughs> yeah, he's got this bad eye, you know. He's a macho guy. He's a great big guy to start with. He's a real, real, you know, I'm the biggest, meanest guy that ever walked, you know. And he thinks he can look at the, 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 the moon and the sun eclipse, you know, and, and without any protection. So he burnt the retina on this eye. He's got a blind spot in that eye, and that's his shooting eye. Uh -huh. He carries a full box of 30-30 cells every time he goes to the woods. If the deer will hang around long enough, you know, he will shoot up most of those shells. And when, he, when the deer finally gets up and leaves, you know, decides it's going to get out of there, well, he comes to get me to track him. Oh, no. Yeah, and I Dude. say, Eric, you got to remember what I've been telling you, you know. I don't track live, well, and healthy deer. I only track fatally wounded deer. <laughs> <laughs>